This is a Dell PowerConnect 5324, and it's one of the main switches on my network, and it's also one of the loudest. So I'm going to need to fix that now because it's actually causing issues where it's vibrating a wall and you can hear it through a wall. So that's not very good. As you can see by the dust on this unit, this guy's been in work for quite a while. I believe this unit was released in about 2005-ish, but I don't know exactly how old my copy is. So this is a 17 year old design, but still as a gigabit switch does about what all you could need and manages doing VLANs for me just fine. The problem is it has these two little Delta fans in the side that are pumping out quite a bit of noise and a little bit of airflow. And I'm gonna try to make them spin slower, or replace them with something else that does it quieter so I don't hear it as much. And my guess is since the air coming out of it isn't very warm, and this is a fairly low power switch because it doesn't have PoE or any other fancy features, I could spin the fans much slower, get less airflow, and still have more than adequate cooling. I've turned the switch on and switched to an on-camera omnidirectional microphone so you can get a sense of how loud it is. It's probably about as loud as my voice when I'm typically talking in a room, so definitely not something you want to hear all day running. Taking a look at the power consumption when the switch is running, it's only about 17 watts which really shouldn't require much active cooling at all to stay within a reasonable temperature range. So I feel pretty comfortable turning the fans much slower here. And the first thing I notice is this switch is pretty nasty in here. There's quite a bit of dust that's probably built up after the years of using it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put this guy under an air compressor and get it clean. And wow, that looks quite a bit cleaner now that it's been cleaned, almost looks new. But that's probably not gonna be make it quiet. The fans are definitely still much louder than I'd like in this situation, and they also seem to be a bit off balance and is what's making the wall vibrate. So the first thing I'm gonna try is I'm just gonna try unplugging them and seeing if it complains, because if I'm gonna replace the switch or change the speed, it'll probably not be spinning like this, so I wanna see what type of errors it'll throw. So the switch now has a red light on the front showing the fan status, but it doesn't seem to affect operation at all, so the switch will continue switching packets just fine and it doesn't seem to make it auto shut down. One other interesting thing I just noticed is my power consumptions dropped to about 13.7 watts instead of 17. So these two fans here were using almost four watts on their own, just trying to cool the system. So about a quarter of the power of the switch was just cooling it, which I find is a little interesting. And since I have a thermal camera, I might as well take a look inside at the switch using my thermal camera. Looking at the thermal camera, the main hotspot, is this little center chip right here. And according to the thermal camera, it's running at about 37, 38 degrees. The other main spot where a lot of heat is coming from is the power supply, which is also in the mid 30 degree range. Everything else is pretty cool, including that giant heat sink here, isn't really doing anything in the middle. And this other little chip here doesn't seem to be doing much either. With the temperatures that I'm seeing right now, I probably don't actually even need a fan for this unit but because it's an environment that might get kind of hot during the summer and I wanna just make sure it runs cool with the cover on it, I'm gonna put a low speed fan in it. I think I have a spare Noctua 40 millimeter fan and that's what I plan to use here because it should be a good amount quieter than one of these fans. And I'm having, guessing just having one of these fans should be plenty of cooling because it's not making very much heat. So I have my little Noctua fan here and it appears to be the exact same size as the included fans, I believe 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters by 20 millimeters. But unfortunately the connector pinouts differ. The actual shape of the connector is the same and it'll plug in just fine, but they swapped where the pins were used on it. I find that really weird and annoying. So what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna use the little low noise adapter that they have because even quieter is probably better and just unclip it using these little push pins here and then swap it around so it matches the same color layout that these included fans have. So I finished getting it ready and this fan is now spinning correctly and ready to be used. I'm using the low noise adapter that's included with the Noctua fan and it is almost silent. I can't hear it from about a foot away from me right now. I plan to put it in this slot right here because it looks like this chip's making the most amount of heat and it makes sense to try to put it there. I plan to put a little tape over this other fan hole, so that way the air can't just come in here and go straight back out. It has to actually go across all the components. So now it's time to just screw this fan in, screw the rest of the case back together, and put it back in use. And while the switch is so much quieter right now, I can barely hear it running. It still does a little bit of vibration on the case, but I wouldn't say it's an issue at all. And it kind of just blends in with the background noise in my room right now. I can still feel a fairly reasonable amount of air moving through it, and the temperatures seem fine, so it's ready to put it back in the network setup and start using it. 
And when I'm moving stuff around, I might as well clean up my little network shelf too. So it'll look a little nicer and have everything laid out a bit better. So here's what my network shelf looks like now. And I've just kind of gotten rid of some old switches and devices that aren't needed anymore and tidied up the cables. So it looks a bit cleaner and the internet's all back on and working now.